Alex Grieve, better known as Ivy Crazy, and this is the Chimera 2. The Chimera 2 gives excellent WAG-free HD video. With the plane's four stabilizers and very unique silhouette, it's not easily mistaken for any other aircraft. We've made a few improvements to the Chimera, such as ABS stabilizers, as well as Coroplast stabilizers. Sturdier ABS winglets. The GoPro box is now standard, as well as the skids. It also comes with a battery door. The airfoil on this aircraft is fully symmetrical, which means that it can go in excess of 125 miles an hour and still slow down and cruise around 30 to 35 miles an hour. The way to launch the Chimera is the same way as the V1. Grab it by the nose with one hand, throttle up, and bring it up over your head, releasing about right here. The airplane will not stall, but will simply climb out into the sky. So with that, here's how you build it. Start off this build by adding a heavy amount of glue to the central fuselage. Do not add glue all the way to the top as the top of the fuselage will be exposed, but be sure to add it all the way along the bottom. Once glued, attach the midwing section and work around up and down side to side a little bit to make sure both surfaces are thoroughly coated with glue. Then pull them apart and set them to the side. Repeat this process for the other side. After approximately 15 minutes, the glue will be cured and ready to be pressed back together. It is a contact adhesive, so it is best to let it dry almost completely before pressing the parts back together. Do not wait more than an hour though to press these parts together. The wing tip is glued on just like the rest. Coat the entire surface with a heavy amount of glue. Again, press it into the midwing section, work it around to be sure both surfaces are thoroughly coated, then wait approximately 15 minutes to press back together. Repeat this for both sides of the airplane. After 15 to 30 minutes, the glue will be dry and ready to adhere the airplane together. Align the bottom of the aircraft up and make sure the very front of the midwing is lined up with the front of the fuselage. You will see that the fuselage rises above the midwing section. This is to allow a four cell setup to go into the airplane without sticking out of the airplane. Press them together firmly and be sure it holds securely. Then go ahead and add your wing tips. Again, line up the tip first and then work your way to the back. Once lined up, put a good bit of pressure to hold both sections together. Repeat with the other side. Once done, I highly recommend letting this dry at least four hours to be sure it's fully cured and ready for the next step. To spar the wings, take two of the rods and cut a section 16 inches long off of the end. This will go right behind the battery bay. Using a straight edge, mark the ends of the spar and then take a pen or pencil and draw a line across that section. Then take the remaining section of spar and put it along the back of the airplane approximately an inch and a half to two inches from the rear of the airplane. It should extend all the way into the wingtip section. Again, using a straight edge to line it up, mark the ends of the spar, then use the straight edge to draw a line across where the spar will lay. You're going to repeat this process for both the top and the bottom of the aircraft. Once the line is marked, then take a knife and cut down into the airplane. Be careful not to cut through. You only want to go deep enough so the spar can be completely embedded into the aircraft. The next step is to glue the spars in. I recommend opening up the channels you just cut by dragging a screwdriver or a pen or other device into the channel to open up a little bit wider to make it easier to inject the glue. Inject a good amount of glue into the slot and then embed your spar. Do the same with the front, the back, as well as the top and the bottom. If you feel it was a little dry, add a little bit of glue over the top to be sure this spar doesn't move, as this will keep the wings stiff in high G maneuvers. Repeat this 
for both the front and the rear main spar. Use a tape measure or other measuring device to mark the locations of the spar on the bottom side. Both spars should line up with the two spars you put on the top. The front spar will be approximately nine inches from the nose of the airplane. So make your mark and then repeat the same procedure for the bottom as the airplane as you did with the top to install your spars. Now it's time to cut the wingtip spars. Cut the spar in half, that is at 24 inches using diagonals or other cutting device. Then you want to install these approximately one to one and a half inches back from the leading edge and extending into the mid wing section as close to the front spar as you can. Again, use a tape measure and a pen and a knife and embed the spar into the wing just below the surface. While not entirely necessary, you can add another spar to the bottom side of the wing right beneath this to add even more rigidity to this airplane. I recommend this for airplanes exceeding speeds of 100 miles an hour. Faster and heavier airplanes will benefit from having the same spar mounted underneath the previous spar on top of the wingtips. This will keep the airplane from flapping its wingtips in a high speed dive or pulling out of a dive with a lot of weight loaded up on it. The procedure is same, the same as the top. Mark the ends of the spar, take a straight edge, cut your line, embed your glue, and then embed the spar into the slot. If you want to make your airplane significantly stronger to crash damage, purchase two to three more spars and install them how I'm showing here. One spar should go from approximately the tip of the wing and extend two inches into the mid wing and repeat this on the top and the bottom. This is because in hard crashes, this section of the airplane will tear. So do this on the top and bottom and this will keep the airplane from tearing at this location when you smash into the ground hard. Repeat this procedure on the bottom side. Note that I'm going approximately two to two and a half inches into the mid wing section as this is a button spar to keep it from tearing in this location. Sparring the front is strictly for crash damage prevention. If you wish to do this, cut the spar into four 12 inch sections and then embed them into the mid wing section, extending approximately a half of an inch into the nose. You don't want to go too far into the nose because you have to make room for the skids and the GoPro box. These are installed the same way as all of the other spars, one on top, one on the bottom with a heavy amount of glue. This won't affect the airplane's handling, but it will sure make it a lot tougher if you nose in hard. Now it's time to laminate the airplane. I recommend letting the spars dry for at least six hours before going over it with laminate to be sure the glue is fully cured. The laminate should be started from the center of the airplane and then working your way out towards the edges. Be sure to get a good coating of laminate on because this makes the airplane not only stronger, but it makes it glide better and it makes it faster. Use a good amount of pressure and press down solidly on the iron to be sure you get a good bond. You don't need a covering iron here. You can simply use a clothing iron and you want the temperature to be approximately 220 degrees, so just barely hot enough to boil water on the iron. I recommend wrapping the laminate over the leading edge of the wing when coating both sides. This will give two coats of laminate along the leading edge, which greatly strengthens the airplane in the event of a crash. To install the elevons, first cut them to size to make sure that they fit 
inside the wingtip section. There will be a stabilizer going on the outside, so you want to cut it approximately a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch short of the overall span of the wingtip. The Elevon is adhered with laminating film. While you can also use packing tape, I highly recommend the use of laminating film as it's a slightly better bond. Simply butt the Elevon section up to the wing core and then use your covering iron and laminate to attach it. You don't want to leave excessive laminate between the Elevon and the wing core. You want this to be a solid joint. You can see what I'm doing here by bending the Elevon down 45 degrees. This ensures that it's on there nice and tight. Then once bonded, simply flip the Elevon up over the top of the wing and then pull the laminate down underneath the wing section and coat the entire thing with the covering iron. This will make a very strong, very stiff hinge if done correctly. The control horn should be installed approximately eight to nine inches in from the wingtip. You want to put these near the center of the Elevon and not near the edge. The screws should be able to poke straight through the balsa wood, but if not, you can use a sharp object to force them through. Then use the included locking plate on the back side and screw it in until tight and secure. Mark a section on the wing where you want the servos to go, then simply cut a plug out with a knife. Feel free to go all the way through the airplane if you'd like here and then simply cut the plug and reinstall it after the servo is installed. An inexpensive but effective tool for cutting these sections out may be made from a cheap soldering gun and a bent section of music wire or welding wire. Once the plug is cut out, simply coat the servo with a little bit of glue and stick it into the hole you've made. The linkages are made from a section of threaded rod and two clevises. Thread the clevis into the threaded rod part way. Then using the other clevis as a guide, cut off the remaining threaded rod. Then screw the clevis into place onto the rod, adjusting it so that the elevon is approximately 1 16th of an inch to 1 8th of an inch raised up above the midwing section. To route the wires, simply pull the servo wire nice and taut, and then drag a knife along the line you've made approximately the depth of the servo wire and embed it into the wing. The mid-wing stabilizers are installed by embedding them into the wing. Lay the stabilizer approximately one half inch back from the seam of where the mid-wing meets the tip and mark out where your spars and servo wire come through. Then take a pair of scissors or diagonals or other cutting device and simply cut a V-notch and cut out these areas so that they might fit through the stabilizer when it is installed in the airplane. Be sure to notch out all of the areas. It's okay to make the notches bigger than they need to be as there will be plenty of ABS embedded in the wing to make it strong. Repeat this for both sides as well as the top and the bottom of the stabilizer section. Once notched out, take a tape measure and measure in approximately one half inch into the mid-wing section of the wing and make a mark. Then, using a straight edge, strike a line down the wing parallel with the whole seam. Do this for both the top and the bottom. Then, take a knife and cut approximately one eighth of an inch deep into that seam. From here, dry fit the central stabilizer into this to be sure your notches are in the correct place and are deep enough. Then remove the stabilizer, add glue, and install the stabilizer back into place.
The winglets on this airplane are simply glued in place. Add a good bit of glue to the outside of the wing and then just press the winglet into place. Move it around, then remove it. Once the glue is approximately dry, about 15 to 20 minutes later, simply press it back into place and it will bond. The motor is mounted via foam block installed into the back of the airplane. Take the foam angled block and mark the sides. Then take a knife and cut the laminate out of this section. The laminate is not bonded strong enough to take the force of the motor, so you have to remove this laminate. Then add a good amount of glue, as in a heavy amount of glue, to the bottom of this block and install in place. The motor is installed onto this block by taking the two side plates and putting the motor mount between them. The motor mount is then glued on to the central block that just got glued. Once the glue is dried approximately 15 to 20 minutes, simply press it down into place and make sure it's glued firm. You want this to dry at least 24 hours before flying the airplane. For those of you who want to be using the Chimera for HD video, there is an included box that fits a GoPro camera as well as a flight camera. This box is glued together via a notch and groove type system. I'm showing you how to coat the parts here, but you can do this however you feel is easiest. Just be sure you don't put the box together backwards, otherwise the GoPro won't fit. Yes, I know, I did it backwards in this example. Oops. <laughs> Install the box by using it as a jig and mark the section of wing that it will take out. Then use a knife and cut this out of the wing. You might want to use one of those very long extendable knives to make this easier as a knife is probably not going to go all the way down through the front of the wing. Once this section is removed, the GoPro box can be glued into place. I highly, highly recommend installing your flight camera first before gluing this box into place so that you might route the wires through the hole in the back of the box. The skids are simply glued in place on either side of the GoPro box. You can add a little bit of glue to the sides of the skids and glue them to the box if you like, but I'm simply using the contour to glue it into place. These are slid on either side of the GoPro box and simply fit into place. You can remove these and let the adhesive dry or you can just install them and leave them set. Either way works. The battery bay is big enough to house most of the electronics for the airplane outside of the speed control. But since I'm setting this one up for a flight stabilizer and autopilot, I'm going to need to cut an extra bay into the airplane. So I'm simply tracing out a rectangular area that I think will house all of the electronics, cutting it out with a knife, and then using my foam hogging tool to take this section of the wing out. Be careful not to go all the way through the foam. However, don't worry too much about this section becoming weak. The spars in front and in back of this section are extremely strong and will keep the airplane from flexing in this area. The receiver, video transmitter, and any other accessories can go anywhere along the airplane. As you can see, I've got the speed control mounted towards the back of the airplane, and I'm simply routing my wires into the area that I put my flight controller. You can put your receiver here if you like as well, or you can put it in the battery bay. Where your component placement is best is up to you. I'm simply showing you where I'm installing mine. So with that, Go out and enjoy your flights. You've got a chimera. The sky is your refuge. I might be crazy, then keep them flying.